Hello, I'm Brent Donaldson with Additive Manufacturing Media. I'm here today as part of our series that looks at the role of software in realizing the promise of additive manufacturing. I'm here with David Benhame, Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of Mark Forged. Of course, Mark Forged is well known for its metal and carbon fiber 3D printers. And many of you have heard of Blacksmith, the software platform from Mark Forged that aims to make manufacturing machines aware by connecting machines that make parts and inspection equipment with artificial intelligence. So specifically for additive, Blacksmith is, is designed to create a continuous feedback loop that analyzes a part design, compares it to the scan part, and automatically adapts the end-to-end -end process to produce in-spec parts. So David, hello. Uh, first, did I, did I get all of that right? And before we jump into the software, um, let's just talk a little bit about uh, Blacksmith and tell me why it's relevant to additive manufacturing. Okay, uh, that's all right. Uh, thank you, Brent. So um, Blacksmith uh, builds on top of our uh, like kind of comprehensive additive software platform already to help you, the engineer, get the part that you want the first time uh, through our system. Um, and it does that by uh, doing two things. One, um, learning about the machine itself because in hardware, every machine is is slightly different, um, and machines themselves go out of tolerance. This isn't unique to additive. Uh, and then two, by leveraging um, fleet learning. So Mark Forge has a distributed fleet of machines all around the world, all of which are printing parts for use in industrial applications. Um, as those machines join the Blacksmith uh, network, uh, the learnings from the individual machines uh, about parts and their differences and their geometries will contribute to um, the global uh, part kernel that will allow Blacksmith to um, predictively uh, like um, manufacture the part uh, correctly the first time. Um, and mm -hmm. so the other the other um, super valuable nugget here is that uh, with our composite machines, which already ship, uh, at least the industrial series, we already ship with a um, laser micrometer on the printhead that are doing scans as it is today. Um, that's in process inspection. So it's learning about your part while the part is being made, which means there, there doesn't necessarily need to be a secondary step, right? A, a secondary inspection step, which is another person taking it off the print bed, bringing it over to a, no, a go, no go gauge or some kind of scanning device, uh, and then writing that information down. Um, this is already built into the process in the software. So, uh, so uh, Blacksmith has not launched publicly yet. We're currently in the process of doing a uh, closed alpha. So mm. if you are a Forge customer and you are interested in uh, joining the alpha or hearing more, um, you can reach out to us to, to ask about that. Uh, we are planning on launching um, Blacksmith like publicly, um, probably 2021. We'll do a, a a more open beta, and then we will do kind of a public uh, public release. We have been using Blacksmith internally um, for a good good period of time, uh, going back to probably at least the the founding uh, the founding platform of Blacksmith has been kind of in use since we started the development on our industrial series. Right, the idea that a machine can learn more about itself mm. and then improve Parts over time is something that was baked into uh, baked into the the X7 um, platform. Hmm. I, I was at your headquarters um, last year. Um, I think it was the uh, fall of 2019, and I, I I talked to Greg Mark, and one of the aspects that he wanted to highlight uh, about Blacksmith was that it was created to learn continually and adapt uh, to process variations uh, over the lifetime of your machine so users should theoretically see greater accuracy in first uh, on first run part quality as time goes on um so let's just let's jump into the software right now uh what are you going to show me and uh what what you mentioned a lot of things in that intro what what area would you like to focus on for this demo um so i'll switch to sharing my screen and uh, what i'll actually Great. do is um rather than run through our main software platform we'll just focus on um the blacksmith process itself so um here i'm going to pull up this video and uh, i'm going to go ahead and hit play and as it's playing i'm going to talk and then i'll jump to some specific scenes um as as they get there so blacksmith when, when it launches um and actually so taking a step back one of the main kind of things in AI or machine learning is this concept called like uh, understandability, right? So you end up building this black box that learns about parts or learns about voice or learns about, you know, whatever. And uh, like it wires itself as a neural network, but understanding how that network thinks or understands things is very, uh, very difficult right now. 
So um, in order for this to be uh, actually rolled out large scale manufacturing, we need to help our customers understand exactly how Blacksmith works and how it will work on their parts. Um, the demo I have here is uh, like what what is very close to um, what we'll launch initially uh, with customers and some of our alpha alpha folks are using right now, um, which is you have this. So I'm going to jump ahead to we are so oh, cool. So uh, this is the the process I mentioned earlier, which is you have this uh, as printed part. You have the wash part it goes into our sintering oven. Out of the sintering oven comes a finished metal part. Um, and then we're at the measurement step where uh, you need to make sure that this finished metal part is in spec, right? So the initial design file we get is an STL that doesn't have any dimensioning information or tolerance information. It's just a dumb file full of STLs. Um, but what you actually do is you'll fixture your part, your finished part um, in a fixture. So you can see, I'll jump back here a second. Um, you've got a ferro arm. So this is a, a pretty common um, piece of scanning equipment that a lot of our customers already have and are using today. Um, you'll notice here you've got the wrench. I mentioned the wrench earlier. Um, this is the first iteration through of this wrench as a design file. And then we actually have a printed fixture. So one of the things we're known for in the industry is our, is our super strong, stiff, accurate um, 3D printed fixture. So you bring your design file in, Iger automatically generates a fixture for you for scanning for Blacksmith. Cool. You locate uh, you locate the scanning arm relative to the part, so the software knows what it's looking like and uh, looking at, and it'll make the guessing or the um, association of that point cloud to that to that design file um, even easier. And um, you scan the part. So here's actually a rendering of how the software is understanding. So this is this actually developed from internal um, debugging technology. So as the software engineers are trying to understand how to help Blacksmith recognize these these geometric features. Um, easier, like uh, rendering the part and actually um, color coding it to uh, how close it is to in spec or out of spec um, was useful. And you'll see uh, I'm colorblind, so forgive me if I butcher these colors, but the red points here are uh, not the part, but the um, pieces of a point cloud that are green or blue or yellow are the part. And then their, their discoloration is their deviation from nominal. So once the software has scanned the part um, and then actually uh, um, figured out which points correlate with what part on your initial mesh, it starts to learn and think about, okay, uh, this feature looks like a hole, this feature looks like a hexagon, this feature looks like, you know, a wrench, eventually the combination of those features. And then it will attempt to go back to the original model, figure out what pieces, what types of distortion impacted that feature, and then um, produce a uh, corrected build a corrected print or manufacturing process that when run back through that same machine will produce a, a corrected part. So um, we've gone back, we've printed a corrected version of this wrench, we've refixtured it, and uh, now we are scanning it again. And uh, you'll notice that after the we've scanned enough data um, and this point comes back in, uh, that the part is much more in tolerance or in spec than it was the first time. And this is the design that you'll lock on. So, you know, because this part happens to be in tolerance and is usable, one, we, we know that now, and two, that when we roll this out to our fleet of machines and we start manufacturing these things uh, in bulk, um, you'll know that uh, they're all coming off uh, out of the machine or out of the sintering oven um, in spec. Very good. Uh, so that is a lot of information in a, a very brief amount of time. Um, thank you so much, David. That's David Benhaim of Mark Forged. I'm Brent Donaldson. And if you want to learn more about this application or the use of artificial intelligence with 3D printing, find more videos like this on additivemanufacturing.media or on our YouTube page. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.